many reviewers are calling the Barbie movie woke and also anti-men. I don't agree with this and I'll tell you why. You're watching Dolls with D. Some of you in the doll world already know me. I'm Denise Van Patten and I'm a doll expert. But most of you are here to talk about the movie, so let's dig right in. First, wow, this movie is huge, breaking box office records. I knew it since I couldn't get a seat at most of the showings on the first day and I couldn't find a parking spot in the middle of the afternoon in my local 18 screen theater. This never happens. Also, there were a ton of teens at the movie, including a whole bunch of teenage boys. Some of them dressed up, some of them sat next to me in the theater laughing their heads off, and at the end, said that they thought it was a really great movie. The makers of the Barbie movie really knew their stuff. Everything from Barbie outfits to Barbies that were discontinued to Barbie dream homes. This movie is such a visual feast as well as being a homage to Barbie. If you love Barbie, played with Barbie, or collect Barbie, you can enjoy the movie just on this level. For instance, I love the Alan doll played by Michael Cera in the movie. Just what I'd expect if this Alan doll came to life, outfit and all. This doll from 1964 was never really popular. Today, even mint in box, it sells for a fraction of what any Barbie or Ken from this era sells for. So like the fact that he had an inferiority complex in the movie is totally Alan. The movie makers also had a great understanding of how little girls play with dolls, especially Barbie and Ken. Spoilers incoming, so leave here if you don't want to know plot details. In Barbie land in the movie, Barbie of course runs everything. She owns all the dream houses, she's the president, the Supreme Court justices, she is the star. Ken, on the other hand, he's an afterthought. He's the sidekick, the supporting player. Some people see this as the movie being woke and anti-men. In reality, this is how little girls have always seen Ken as the secondary character in their Barbie play. A little girl might have 10 Barbie dolls, but she'll rarely have ever have more than one Ken doll. The portrayal of Ken in this movie has nothing to do with being anti-man and everything to do with how little girls play with their dolls. Dolls traditionally, through play, aid the imagination of little girls as their avatars, so they see themselves grown up in the real world. Fashion dolls especially facilitate this. Plus, the clothing of fashion dolls is gorgeous, feminine, pretty, and so varied much unlike the clothing of male dolls, which let's face it, is a little boring. But let's now take it back to the 1800s with the original French fashion dolls. These dolls, like Barbie, were made to be adult women with lots of clothing and accessories, and yes, even doll trunks. Maybe you can find one French fashion doll dressed as a male doll for every 100 dressed as a female doll today, if that. Those produced to be male dolls specifically with molded mustaches or sideburns are even rarer. This pattern of doll play with fashion dolls where their male doll is not important goes back to well over 100 years. Come forward now to the 1950s. Madame Alexander produced the Sissy and Sissette fashion dolls. Yes, they did have high heels, check them out, High heel feet. Barbie was not the first to have this feature, and also by far not the first doll not to be a baby doll, but I did like that opening scene in the movie anyway. Madame Alexander produced absolutely no male companion dolls for her fashion dolls in the 1950s. It's just that play patterns don't require male dolls very much, perhaps as a dad doll or a doll for a date in a tuxedo so your doll can get all dressed up. Collectible modern fashion dolls made for collectors are similar. For every 100 Tyler Wentworth dolls, maybe if you're lucky, you're going to find one Matt O'Neill doll. For every 100 Jean dolls, maybe one Trent Osborne, her male companion and a doll I don't even have one to show you. So back to Barbie land in the movie. Since Barbie is, well, Barbie, she views Ken as little girls do, as an accessory, as an afterthought, as the sidekick. This is all our lead Ken, played by Ryan Gosling, knows. And it is how all the Kens in Barbie land are, until Ryan Gosling Ken comes to the real world with Barbie, where he sees for the first time that men can be in lead roles and run things, be the main star and not the sidekick. So um, more spoilers here, Ken goes back to Barbie land, tells the other Kens about real world men, the Ken dolls revolt, and the Ken dolls upend the Barbie land order of things. I'm not gonna dwell on all the plot points here, but I did want to show you where this view of Ken as a doll and character comes from. It's not from a place of the movie being woke or hating men, it's from a place of how little girls play with and view Barbie and Ken, and indeed all male fashion doll for hundreds of years. 
Now, I can see some of the criticism of the movie being woke, and this comes from some of the heavy-handed details in the real world that were used to shorthand to Barbie and Ken the patriarchy in the real world, and how it's different from Barbie land, and dumb details like men being obsessed with beer and horses. That plus the usual buffoon that Will Ferrell plays as the head of Mattel. Honestly, I can't stand that actor in any movie he's in because he always plays a buffoon. But anyway, so you can see at least where the criticisms of the movie as being anti-male come from. Also, why did all-male Mattel board go to Barbie land except for more buffoonery? They don't help resolve the plot and their presence there is truly unnecessary. But at least you now know the genesis of Kent's character in this movie universe because of who he is to generations of little girls that have played with Barbie. If they made this more clear in the movie, they could have stayed away from some of the stupid anti-male stereotypes and had a stronger plot. So I found the movie not to be woke, just a little lazy. In fact, if I had wrote the Barbie movie, I would have made it all about Barbie and very little about Ken at all. Perhaps Barbie Land could have been collapsing because little girls now play with technology more than they play with Barbie. Hey Barbie sequel producers, call me when you're writing that sequel. For me overall, in the movie, I love the Barbie Land world, the building, the sets, the costumes, Margot Robbie as Barbie, and Ryan Gosling was okay as Ken. Rhea Perlman as Ruth Handler was fantastic, and I just loved Michael Sarah as poor Alan. I also loved the weird Barbie concept, but that concept could have been taken further than just Kate McKinnon's character. Imagine an entire sub-colony of dolls that got played with too hard, with missing limbs and weirdly cut hair and ill-fitting mismatched clothes. It would have been great with Kate McKinnon as their leader. Points also given to the great diversity of Barbies in the movie. But wait, where was short Barbie? Every type of Barbie imaginable has been made and was in the movie, but you didn't see a short Barbie anywhere. I'm five foot tall. This kind of irritates me. I sort of understand why there is no short Barbie. Just like the male doll, she doesn't fit Barbie's clothes. Still, if you can portray fluffy Barbies, you can also portray short Barbies on the screen as well. As for the ending, okay, big spoiler here. Turn away, you've been warned. It made no sense for Barbie ending up human at the end. Wasn't the whole movie about accepting oneself however messy and real your reality is? So Barbie at the end of it all doesn't want to be a Barbie anymore, doesn't want to be a doll. She wants to be human. Stupid ending. Negates the whole movie. I also dislike that really nothing changed for Ken in Barbie land. At least in the movie, a little respect or equality for his years of being Barbie's sidekick should have happened. So go see the Barbie movie and see for yourself. Do you still think the movie was too woke? Please let me know in the comments and welcome to Dolls with D. This channel is brand new, so we'd love it if you would subscribe to this channel and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. As mentioned, I'm Denise Van Patten. See you next time as we explore the fascinating world of dolls. Mm -hmm.